Hello, so recently, um, or not even too recently, about a year ago I did a video about um, the difference between 40mm Ghost and 40mm NATO filters, why they're sort of not compatible with each other for the most part. And that video raised a lot of questions, although it obviously answered a lot, so what I'm going to do in this video is try to explain it in a bit more detail, and explain a bit more about normalisation of filters, because I think that's where people get uh, confused about what's a normalisation. So if I show you the two types now, obviously there's no strict design of what either of these look like. In my left hand I have, and I guess that's going to be probably right to you on the camera, but in my left hand I have um, a Soviet uh, GP5 filter. So basically this is in Ghost threaded. Um, and here is a NATO filter, this is one of the old Draeger ones. Um, this is NATO threaded. Now, what that basically means is that NATO Stanag and um, Ghost, although they're both 40mm, the screws are different. Um, it's probably hard to actually show you just how different they are, you know, easily here. Um, but you'll just have to take my word for it that the screw pitch is a bit different, you know, um, the thickness of the screw threads are often different. The point is that basically this is why they don't really work with each other on the other masks. Um, now, as far as my Goss filters tend to screw in a bit better to NATO masks than NATO filters tend to screw into Goss masks, I think that's generally because the NATO filter threads are a little bit fatter than the Ghost ones, which seems to be where the main issue is. However, the point is, if you want to be protected, you don't use the wrong kind of filter on the wrong kind of mask. Now, the simple way of explaining it, for people who might find this terminology easier, is if you think about firearms, think of two similar firearms that have very similar calibers but they're not identical and you know you wouldn't be able to fit one into the other gun or if you did it might cause the gun to explode you know shooting it because it's not designed for that gun uh, think maybe 9x 18mm and 9x 19mm probably a good comparison um, now uh, it's not as serious as that because obviously your gas mask is not going to explode if you screw the wrong filter in the issue is you might not actually get 100% protection so, the issue is, if we get a Soviet mask like this GP5, that when you have um, a Ghost filter, that screws in absolutely fine, because this is designed for Ghost filters. Now, a very important thing to pay attention to is this sort of rubber O-ring or the rubber seal inside there, because this might be the easier way of getting a filter to fit the mask that's not designed for it. So, if we put it on here, and then start screwing, in a moment it should bite. There we go. On it. Yeah, there you go, it's bitten now. And then this will screw in absolutely fine. With filters, you shouldn't ever screw them so tight that they go really tight, because that's when often you can't get them back off again, um, which has happened to me on several masks. I eventually got them off, but it was a lot of effort. Um, so basically what happens is, obviously, the screw goes in as you'd expect a screw to work, and when it gets to the top, it sits flush against that rubber ring, which means that the air can't come around the outside of the threads. The air has to come through the filter, because it's made a seal. Now, I'm not going to force a NATO filter into this GP5, but I'll just try and demonstrate what happens. Is that, basically, if you start trying to screw this NATO filter in, it will get part way in, then there will be a lot of resistance, and I'm not going to force it anymore, um, because the thread pitch is slightly different, and then, basically, you can force it and try and get it to the rubber O-ring. Um, that might make a seal, if you're lucky. Um, you know, then you've got a seal, but the issue is you've probably damaged the threads by doing that. So what then happens is when you unscrew the filter and maybe try and put another NATO or Ghost filter on, um, it's not going to actually ever sit flush again because you've, you know, maybe bent the metal on the inside trying to force the wrong size filter in. Now, I think this is why some people say they've tried certain filters on certain masks and they've worked and other people don't get success with it because sometimes it does come down to slight design defects maybe on the individual mask and filter, but by standard a Ghost thread shouldn't accept a NATO filter because they're not the same screw thread. Um, now, there is several solutions to this. Um, one of the most popular ones, although the stock's apparently running out of them at the moment, is to get Polish filters um, from after the Cold War. This isn't a FP5 filter. Um, apparently this is an FP211 filter, if um, that's correct on there. It's basically an ABEP3 filter or the FP5 filter. And what these are, these are normalised filters. So what they do is, there's a bit of resistance there, but it always seems to work, um, is what the Poles did after the Cold War, was they had lots of Soviet like military equipment left over, um, which were obviously Ghost 
threaded, um, but they wanted to become a NATO member and use NATO equipment. So all their new masks are in 40mm NATO, but what they then did was made the um, their new filters kind of slightly different. Now I'll see if I can demonstrate this. Um, what they did when they normalised filters is they tried to make the screw thread more similar to the Gost angle as far as I can tell. So it's kind of a hybrid between the two filters. It's not perfect, but normalised filters do seem to make airtight seals of both Gost and NATO masks, which is the important bit. Um, so obviously, yes, this is well designed thing. The FP5 filters are brilliant, but sadly it seems I think Beastles run out of them. And I think a few other people are saying they can't find even other sellers of them in now, so... You know, until more FP5s turn up on the surplus market, I guess you have to count yourself out with that idea. And I think some people are saying in America they couldn't actually get FP5 filters imported for a reasonable price at all, so that wasn't an option to them. So, there you go. But it gets a bit more complicated as well. For example, this is an Israeli mask. Now, Israeli and Chinese masks, as far as I'm aware, are both normalised. The reason being that Israel and China were worried that, you know, they might not have very good allies of people um, and then they wouldn't be able to buy supplies. So what they did is they made it so their masks would compa be compatible with either filter. So to demonstrate that, here's um, a NATO filter. Screws in absolutely fine. Here's the Gost filter. Screws it absolutely fine. And here's our normalised filter. Now I assume this one will work, but um, I haven't really tried it on these. Yeah, it screws in absolutely fine. The reason these work is because obviously I think the threads have been made just wider in there. And the more important bit of this is the O-ring, or like your rubber seal at the bottom. Now, this is the bit where it kind of raises some interesting questions. Because, not with all masks, but with lots of masks, it seems there is a way of making um, Ghost Mask compatible with NATO filters. And that's to add more rubber O-rings. So let me show you that now. Okay, so here's my Soviet PMG mask. Now you notice I've put a rubber O-ring in there. Basically, by default, it doesn't have an O-ring that big. It looks like that. Um, but what you can do is if you open um, most 40mm filters up, you get one of these in the cap. And it's, you know, to keep the seal um, of the filter well sealed when you've got the sealed filter, so obviously, um, you know, it preserves the life of the filter. It's like a purity seal kind of thing. Um, so what you have there is one of those. Now, because um, this is a PMG and not a um, sort of ghost mask of a metal screw-in thread, um, it's a bit more flexible when you screw in filters. Why? And that's why lots of people for a while said, yeah, you can put NATO filters on it. Well, NATO filters screw in, but without an extra O-ring, they never make a proper seal. However, if we now screw this filter in, it's actually gone in properly, and um, it's connected to that O-ring in there, and it makes an airtight seal. So there we go, it works fine. So the reason it doesn't normally work on various masks is basically because if you're trying to force a NATO filter in, um, because the thread thickness is different, um, it never gets quite to the top of the filter well or the filter input. Um, and then what happens is um, there's a bit of a gap. Um, there's a bit of a gap around the threads because they're not quite evenly matched. And then any air you're breathing, although most of it is going through the filter, some air will seep around the outsides. Um, if I show you with um, the GP5. The majority of the air will basically seep around this bit. Um, or some of the air will, and then it will get in there because it's not quite touching, which means obviously it's not going to work. Now, as said, you could attempt this with other masks if you really wanted to, so you can get your O-ring like that, pop it in, you've now got a double O-ring in the GP5, um, and then what you could do is, again, carefully do it, don't force it in, try and screw a NATO filter in, see how far it will get in. If it goes in far enough, like this one seems to have done, you may have a working seal because of that extra o-ring, but again, do this for caution because forcing a filter too many times is going to break the mask. Um, now, I would definitely recommend you do this test of banana oil or something that smells really, really strongly. The reason being is that, basically, lots of people, I think, who attempt this and it doesn't work and they don't understand why, um, what they do is um, they get maybe air freshener but not very strong air freshener. Um, they spray a little bit, which is obviously very... Uh, smelly to your regular nose um, and then they've not got the proper seal because they put a NATO filter on there but 99% or so of the air is going through the filter 
so the remaining little bit is so faint um, that they can't really smell it, maybe their sense of smell isn't very good anyway, and then they they think the NATO filter works on the Goss mask when it actually doesn't. <clears throat> Again, it's giving you better protection than certainly having no filter on a Goss mask, especially if it's an indate NATO filter, but if you're exposed to something really dangerous, um, you could be obviously inhaling it, not realising it could still do you in that way. So, um, I'd always recommend banana oil for mask testing or something really similar. The reason being is because you can have it in a bottle, you can hold it up to any little cracks you think there might be in the mask. And banana oil is such a strong smell that it will always get through regardless. But as I said, if you don't have banana oil and you do test something in a room full of air freshener, it's, you could do a lot worse. Um, I think it's better to test it even if you use a bit of a faulty test system in a sense than not testing a mask at all. Um, but there's that, so hopefully this has explained it so you can get both normalised masks and normalised filters, GOST masks and NATO um, masks and obviously GOST filters and NATO filters. The point being that unless you're using a normalised filter on either of the masks or a... Um, you know, a normalised uh, mask with either of the filters, you're not going to get a proper thing. So get the right filters for the mask. However, as we've said before, because most of the old GOST filters contain asbestos or, you know, are questionable at best or they're expired, um, you probably want to always go with a NATO mask for survival scenarios, simply because you can find the filters far easier than new. And, you know, there's less messing about to just get the mask to work. So hopefully this video has kind of informed you a bit more on the difference between 40mm NATO and GOST filters. So you can understand, you know, a bit more why they don't work with each other.